Ini Uh, I can't find the pen. Thank you. Yes. Welcome everyone on this sunny, finally sunny, warm afternoon, um, uh, which maybe we have our speaker to thank for the fortunate change in our weather. Uh, so our, our speaker today, who is uh, hosted by the uh, Theory and Practice in South Asia program, is uh, Dr. Hamid Reza Elich Khani, who started studying uh, fine art, calligraphy in Nastaliq and uh, Thulf style in Tehran, and then did a, a degree in theater and dramatic literature at the Faculty of Art in Tehran, and went on to do a BA in Persian literature at Azad University in Tehran, and then an MA in Persian literature, and then went to Delhi University uh, where he did his PhD on a study of Mughal art, the study of Mughal art of bookmaking and ornamentations through the poetry of Orfia Shirazi uh, to Beydel Dehlavi. He has won uh, awards, fellowships from the British Institute of Persian Studies to work at Cambridge and from the American Institute of Iranian Studies, where he is currently a fellow at Reed College, working on uh, constructing a database, a uh, digital project of masterworks of Persian calligraphy, which hopefully will at some point be available to all of us. Uh, he has taught uh, calligraphy and Persian literature at Amir Kabir University in Tehran and at Azad University in Tehran and at the University of Rome, La Sapienza, as well as having taught uh, or directed rather the Negaristan Hunar uh, Arts and Culture Institute in Iran. He has many publications to his credit, including a 1994 dictionary of calligraphy and the related arts, Farhang of Ajigan wa Estilahat Khoshnavisi, which uh, has been published in a new edition in 2010 and is currently in press at Brill in an English edition. It's based on 70 works of uh, uh, prior works focused on the Nastali uh, calligraphy tradition. He's written about uh, the treatises on calligraphy and related arts, Reza Alati Dar Khosh Nabisi. He has edited numerous uh, poetry divans, including the Editio <coughs> Prenkeps of the 15th century poet Nargesia Abhari, and also an edition of the Divan of Furuqiya Bastami and of the Divan of Hassan e Dehlavi Sajzi, as well as a textbook on Persian literature, a book that we have used here and our students here have used on the terms of catechology in the Divan of Beydel Dehlavi. Uh, he has written a work on introduction uh, to Persian calligraphy. He has edited the work Meratul Estela of Anand Ram, Ram Mokhles and uh, several other works uh, of which the last I'll principally mention because I have a copy here and it's his <laughs> most recent work. It's a dictionary of terms and uh, relating to calligraphy and ornamentation and the making of manuscripts in the classical <coughs> Persian tradition. And that came out through Farhang Moasir in uh, Tehran just uh, last year. So this is his most recent publication. We're really <laughs> delighted. Oh, and, 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 also and this is also, uh, which is about the biographies of the calligraphers. Uh, and uh, a particular of particular interest for us South Asianists is that it also includes uh, 
from Miratul Alam of Muhammad Bakhtawar Khan's Ahwal Khattata. So, and several, in fact, works, you know, very prolific and. Yes. Uh -huh. So, he is combining both the uh, knowledge of a practitious practitioner, a practicing calligrapher, and also yeah. a scholar. So, we are really delighted to have uh, Professor uh, Rez Hamid Reza Khalid Khani. Thank Welcome. you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, <coughs> it's my great uh, honor and uh, pleasure to be here today. I would like to thank Professor Muzaffar Alam, my dear friend and specialist on Indian history, who invited me and uh, arranged uh, this uh, schedule. Uh, and uh, I wish to specially thank uh, distinguished scholar Professor uh, Franklin Lewis, and uh, I want to thank all, uh, all of you uh, for coming. Well, <coughs> studying uh, inscriptions is a subcategory of archaeology in India. During the last century, most of the surviving inscrip uh, <coughs> inscriptions uh, have been uh, chronicled. It is now critical to investigate their calligraphic script, aesthetic qualities, and techniques of creation. My research investigates the influence of Persian language and calligraphy on Indian inscriptions. The Epigraphia Indomuslimica, the annual book of epigraphical studies in India, published from <coughs> 1907 to 1977. Hundreds of articles on Islamic inscriptions, Persian and Arabic, were presented. Ghulam Yazdani and Ziauddin Desai, two famous figures in this field, dedicated a lifetime to investigating uh, them. One of the best uh, references on this subject is uh, Seyr al Manazel by Mirza Sangin Beg in which uh, he describes the inscriptions of Delhi. Another reference that covers the inscriptions of India entitled Naqsh Parsi Bar Ahjar Hind Persian language engraved on Indian inscriptions by Ali Asghar Hikmat was published in 1958 in Tehran. Epigraphy. <coughs> the history of uh, epigraphy can be dated back to the era of Ashoka, the Indian king who ruled uh, from 273 to 232 BCE. Some inscriptions in Barahmi and Kharushti script have survived from that period. In the Islamic period, significant changes were made uh, concerning the artist and aesthetic aspects of epigraphy. Most of them can be found in mosques and palaces and the rest are mainly in public places and uh, on gravestones. Indian inscriptions are written either in Arabic or Persian. The ones uh, in Arabic are frequented uh, until the uh, 12th century, but uh, from then on they are limited to religious texts uh, on the Quran and Hadith. The oldest Arabic inscription discovered on the wall 
of a well established by an Iranian man named Abu Ja'far Jozajani in Hund village near Sand Riverside. Day 2, 1089 and is preserved in the Peshawar Museum in Pakistan. My talk uh, begins uh, with inscription from uh, Delhi and uh, divides uh, the inscriptions into two parts, beginning uh, with the oldest Persian text from the Qubbatul Islam Mosque, Delhi, um, Shah Jahanabad, and uh, second, uh, other streets, uh, Fatpur Sikri, Agra, or Akbarabad, uh, Punjab, and uh, Golconda. My talk proceeds uh, geographically and uh, chrony chronologically. First, I established a definition of Persian calligraphy and I describe its uh, characteristics through the presentation. I discuss uh, in inscriptions written in Persian as well as Iranian calligraphers that immigrated to India. Inscriptions from Delhi. The oldest uh, Persian inscription is located in Delhi on the threshold of the eastern gate of the Qubbatul Islam Mosque and dates uh, to 1191. It read, this mosque is built by Qutbuddin Aybak, God bless him. In Masjid Rabun Yad Kard, Qutbuddin, Khuda Rahmat Konad, Va Har Ke Binad, In Khair Ra Dua Konad. Although the mosque's mehrabs are decorated with very fine calligraphic in Kufic style, the script uh, of the inscription is in a low quality mixture of souls and nasr. It's uh, parts of mihrab. From the 12th century onwards, numerous inscriptions were uh, produced in the Persian language using souls, nasr, and nastalir scripts. The, <coughs> a, the apex of Persian calligraphy in India was in the period from Humayun to Aurangzeb, when due to the immigration of Iranian masters to India, a great improvement uh, in the quality of calligraphy took place. For instance, excellent works on Akbar's mausoleum, the Taj Mahal in Agra, and the Atka Khan tomb in Delhi were written by Iranian calligraphy masters. It's the eastern gate of Qubbatul Islam, the first uh, <coughs> inscription with uh, this date and uh, another one again in western gate uh, with date 1196 uh, they are not uh, in beautiful uh, rules of calligraphy and different uh, design of Allah in Kufic style. In Persian language was uh, introduced uh, into India in the Ghaznavid era by Sultan Mahmud attacked in 1002. Persian appeared on uh, craved stone and in inscriptions about 200 years after this. In the period of uh, Muhammad Samghuri, 
the mosque of Qubbatul Islam was built in Mehruli uh, in 1191 by one of his commanders, Qutbuddin Ibak. There is an inscription on the frieze of the mosque eastern gate containing a line of the uh, Quran along with another sentence stating uh, that the mosque has been constructed by using the material of 27 destroyed Hindu shrines in uh, 1191. complex of Bakhtiyar Kaki again in uh, Mehruli uh, has uh, more <coughs> inscriptions one of them is uh, here in Nastaliq style Bakhtiyar Kaki is a well-known Cheshti Sufi and uh, his mausoleum is in, in South Delhi Mehruli the inscription on the main entrance of the Darga shows that it was built in uh, 1541 by Khalilullah Khan, a governor of Shir Shah Suri. The text consists of four lines of Persian poetry. It reads uh, like this. Another inscription uh, on Mehrab, on uh, <coughs> marble, it's uh, referred to this inscription. Written in elegant Nastaliq comes from the Farrukhsiyar period and consists of three lines of Persian poetry. The technique of this is inlay. Uh, it's a uh, white marble and engraved the uh, marble and put the another black stone it's called musa it's a special material of stone uh, it's a, another inscription in the shir shah suri reign a chronogram <coughs> may be uh, found in a Hemistich, it's a half of a line in poetry. At the end of the following inscriptions, uh, written in an inelegant uh, script. I don't know why. It's not uh, 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 good, and uh, the reading of this is uh, so difficult. <laughs> But this time uh, it's not uh, on the wall in facade. It's uh, in the corner of the Bakhtiyar uh, Kaki Darga. Uh, the last uh, facade of uh, Darga includes an inscription with three lines of Persian poetry with beautiful nastaliq from the Farrukhsiyar period written by Abdullah Shirin Ghalam. It has a signature of him here and the date. Of course, it's a stone and after this, uh, with the gold color covered this. Complex of uh, Nizamuddin Dargah. Nizamuddin was a great Cheshti Sufi who died in 1325. There are several other graves in this mausoleum belonging to famous rulers and well-known poets, uh, such as Amir Khosro Dehlavi. It's an image of Kutla Nizamuddin Mosque. <coughs> this mosque was constructed in Firuz Shah reign in 1370. Apart from the holy lines of the Quran, its inscription bears a Persian description of Firuz Shah. Here I <coughs> compare the style of uh, Indian and Persian. It's a line of inscription of Kutla Nizamuddin in uh, Indian style 
in India, in all the references, it's not souls. Sometimes uh, about Taj Mahal, another place, just called uh, Toghra. And for example, about Amanat Khan, Toghra Nevis. Uh, but uh, in Iran, both of them uh, <coughs> are souls. The top is uh, from Kutla Nizamuddin Mosque, and the, the down is a part of inscriptions uh, from uh, Atka Khan. It's near uh, and uh, in the complex of Nizamuddin. But uh, the down written by Baqi Muhammad from Bukhara, it's in Persian style. In this image, I compare the Aleph, the first uh, letter of alphabet. At the right uh, part of Aleph in Persian style of souls, uh, we have an uh, appendix. But in Indian style, at the first it's very thick, and again up to the down it's uh, uh, thin. And again, <coughs> I compare the form and shape of Allah. Uh, this is from a mosque of uh, Isfahan, Sheikh Lutfullah, and uh, it's uh, belong to Atka Khan, and it's again from Kutla Nizamuddin. The form of Allah is very different of two kinds because they are uh, completely uh, Iranian style, but Indian style is very different. It's uh, another inscription in Nastaliq style. <coughs> Persian text in Nastaliq style from an inscription on the tomb of Nizamuddin. It's belonging to 1653. Uh, Khalilullah, ruler of Shah Jahan Abad, constructed this porch around the mausoleum. It's again uh, in a technique of Mu'arraq. In lay, it's a uh, uh, this technique uh, is not usual in Iran. We don't have uh, uh, any uh, sample of this. Uh, just uh, in Iran, we use the tile. But in India, because of weather, this kind is more better. It's flat, but the uh, black stone <coughs> is uh, engraved uh, uh, with the inlay technique. Another gravestone in uh, this uh, complex of Nizamuddin uh, belong to Jahanara tomb, a magnificent example of Mu'arraq. It's a uh, name of technique in Arabic and Persian, uh, equal in lay with black stone. It's from the epitaph of Shah Jahan's daughter, written in Persian souls script from 1681. The lines engraved on the marble are filled with a kind of black stone called Musa means Moses. The Persian text uh, of the epitaph reads Hawal Hayyul Gayyum and after this it's in Persian. Be ghayr sabz napushat kasi mazar mara ke qabr poosh qariban hamin giyah bas ast. Al faqirat al faniyah jahanara bint khajegan chasht. Murid khajegan chasht bint Shah Jahan padishah Ghazi. It's another detail of this. Unfortunately, all the people uh, can, with the key and other things, uh, uh, damage this. In 10 years, uh, I saw it's uh, every day. Uh, <coughs> yes, uh, will be better, um, worst. Uh, in around the, this, they are uh, with uh, different colors uh, like yellow, blue. 
but this time it's just the space of them. Another mosque of uh, Delhi is Kali or Kalan Mosque. Kalan Mosque uh, located in the Turkaman gate of Delhi has a Persian inscription uh, on white marble in Muhaqqaq script written in 1387. Uh, for taking the photograph of this, it's, uh, it has uh, more steps just I must uh, go to uh, opposite building at the roof of this, uh, take this uh, photograph. Yes, it's uh, disturbed a bit. Uh, this uh, inscription is very rare. Uh, because of a uh, kind of calligraphy, it's in Muhaqqaq style, not souls. It's rare, maybe we can find just two, three sample of this uh, in all the India. And it's very uh, beautiful with uh, all the rules of uh, calligraphy. Another mosque is uh, Bara Mosque in Ludi uh, Garden. This mosque built <coughs> in uh, Sekandar Ludi times in 40, 1494 has more than 100 inscriptions just in that part. In Indian souls, most of them are made with plaster. Again, it's very different uh, because uh, uh, usually the inscriptions in India uh, made with stone but uh, it's not in that material uh, on the frieze of the mihrab we can see Persian uh, poetry it's another view of this it's again Around this part, uh, there are <coughs> uh, Persian poetry. This part, Persian, it's in this space. It has five mihrabs. Another mosque uh, is in Purana Qila, or Old Fort. It again uh, has uh, five mihrab. There is a great mosque in Purana Qila dating back to the Shir Shah Suri period. It contains some Quranic verses and a few Persian poems on these mihrabs. Persian uh, poetry in the mihrab is it's uh, again very rare because we don't have any mosque in Iran in the mihrab uh, Persian poetry. It's uh, very <laughs> remarkable. Do you know who the poet is? Uh, no, they are not uh, belong to the famous uh, poets like Rumi or, for example, Khayyam or Saadi. Uh, another one, this is belong to Saadi uh, in <coughs> uh, Bara Masjid but uh, I cannot uh, find about this I think uh, it's belong to the Persian poets uh, from India because it's about this place or sometimes uh, maybe immigrated uh, from Iran it's a mausoleum of a poet uh, Jamali Kamali the mausoleum of Jamali Kamali <coughs> is east of the ruined of Qiyasuddin Balban and was constructed in uh, 1529 inside and around the roof is a complete Persian sonnet by Jamali, 16 hemistic carved in plaster uh, in an inelegant Nasr style. Uh, 
it begins with this line اگر به کفر کشد سر سیاه کاری ما بود به عفو تو چشم امیدواری ما it's another detail of the inscriptions and after this uh, <coughs> we go to zinatul masajid it has uh, eight persian hemistic in elegant nastaliq with uh, stone marble This uh, <coughs> inscription is just in this part and in another part in here it's uh, not here but uh, before uh, it had a, a souls inscription with Quranic test at Gohan tomb in the complex of Nizamuddin Dargah one of the most important monuments uh, in India from an epigraphical point of view is Atgahan tomb constructed by Khudaguli in 1566. 1566. The tomb contains three gravestones with Quranic verses. This. It's a detail of uh, gravestones. The tomb contains the three gravestones with Quranic verses written in source script. Very beautiful. On four sides of the building, <coughs> uh, there are Quranic inscriptions in bar relief in Persian souls style script. A notable aspect of the tomb is that not only does it contain the name of the architect and date of construction, but it also contains the signatures of the calligraphic artist. <coughs> it's a uh, the main entrance uh, facade inscription on the frieze of the tomb uh, refer to date and name of architect Khodagoli. Oh. Oops. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> Again. Oh, good. Yes, wonderful. <coughs> the main inscription uh, has a several signature of the artist. Not artists. Uh, they are, uh, as you know, uh, the signatures of calligraphers are not set phrase, sometimes in different uh, uh, phrase. For example, one of them is Baghi Muhammad Al-Khatib. Another one is Al-Gharib. Al-Gharib means uh, strange. Uh, it uh, shows uh, he's not uh, <coughs> from, for example, Delhi and just uh, immigrated from Bukhara. Sometimes uh, it's uh, very important uh, uh, if calligrapher may um, <coughs> must to immigrate to another place to write uh, inscriptions or sometimes can do it on the paper and another people bring it it's uh, about this inscriptions uh, with uh, this al qarib uh, we can now uh, he just immigrated and uh, lived in Delhi in uh, that time. Uh, it's an inscription of a bridge. 
It must be may go to the Red Fort uh, because it's belong to Red Fort Museum, but uh, I don't know uh, uh, why uh, it's here. Uh, inscription of a bridge uh, from the Jahangir period, eight hemistic, written in elegant nastaliq by Sharif. Uh, the name of uh, calligrapher is here. It's very complete uh, in the Museum of Redford. And after this, uh, we go to Jama. Mosque of Delhi. This is the largest mosque in India and was established by Shah Jahan in 1650. Uh, the main inscription of the mosque was written by Nurullah Ahmad in source script in the uh, Mu'arraq technique. Again, inlay with black stone using black stone in white marble. It's again very rare because uh, again we don't have uh, any mosque in Iran like this main inscription of them uh, is in Persian. This signature of calligrapher Nurullah Ahmad is exactly here. It's a uh, uh, raining day. <laughs> the Red Fort, uh, another complex. In the 17th century, a large amazing palaces called the Lal Kila was built by Shah Jahan. There are several Persian inscriptions in a Nastali script in this fort some of which are located in the king's bedroom like this. Most of them are executed in Mu'arraq technique like this. 